Wasabi guys, welcome back to another how to build around this commander video. Today we're going to be checking out Varric Warped Sengir from the Dominaria United Commander product. If you have not already, please do hit the subscribe button. We are past 41,000, thank you so much. As a reminder, this is not a deck tech video, this is solely for the purpose of getting people to become more creative deck builders. It's really up to you to make it your own. You can make hybrid strategies, you can go all out in one direction, and find a way to make it all work. With Varric Warped Sengir, we have a fairly costed commander at only 3 mana in white and black, a 2-2 with flying death touch and lifelink, so there's a lot to like already. If this were allowed in any other format, I mean just talking about value in limited, it's already there, it's already a great card. Whenever you activate an ability that isn't a mana ability, if life was paid to activate it, you may pay that much life again if you do copy that ability. You may choose new targets for the copy. This is very interesting because Wizards of the Coast, they like giving us cards that double the value off of things like ETB, things like Death Triggers. While those cards have been, you get double the value and you don't have to pay the cost. This actually makes you pay an additional cost in order to get double the value. It's not all bad though, because this ability does allow you to get around paying additional mana for those costs. So if something is two life and one black mana, you pay an additional two life without having to pay that black mana again and you will get double the value. First way I can see us building around this is, of course, the cost of life. Cards that offer you an ability in exchange for life paid. We also have life gain. That is a big concern here. In any deck where we need to pay additional life, we're going to be losing a ton of it. And while Varric does come with lifelink, he's also only two power, so that's not going to help us out too much. We need plenty of other ways to gain back that life. Or, a possible third strategy, we don't really focus as much on life gain as we do getting our life total down as low as possible so we can participate in some shenanigans. And a final way that I think we could really take advantage of this commander, and it's to no one's surprise whenever we get a legendary vampire, vampire tribal is almost always a viable strategy. So that's one we're going to consider as well. So you might be asking yourself, why can't we use things like Blood Celebrant and Mana Confluence? We are paying life as a cost, it's because these are mana abilities. And unfortunately, mana abilities don't use the stack, so the trigger for Varric would not interact with these at all. I don't want to say they're totally useless in this kind of deck. Again, if you want your life total to go down as quickly as possible for shenanigans, there is still some value in playing them. Something that is probably this commander's strength is how you can take advantage of the fetch lands. We have seven of these that can search up a plains or a swamp, and that's quite a bit because we're going to get double the value when we sacrifice them, we pay that one life. So instead of just getting one swamp or one plains, we can get an additional, which is very unheard of land ramp in a black and white deck. And oh yeah, I almost forgot we have Prismatic Vista from Modern Horizons 1. So there's eight ways of ramping in the early game if you get Varric out there pretty quick. What's cool about this deck is that you could go for a land strategy. It is a bit harder, very narrow if you decide to go that route. And that's mostly because we don't have all of the good green cards for landfall strategies. Crucible of Worlds is one of those cards that I would consider playing even if you didn't go all out in the landfall direction. Because if you have eight of these fetch lands that you're getting double value from, in black and white being able to get them back from your graveyard is going to help you out in the late game. You're going to outpace a lot of other strategies that don't have access to good ramp. Again, we could explore landfall if we really wanted to. I just don't think there's enough meat on the bone for that strategy. We have some standouts like Bloodgast, Emiria Angel, Felidar Retreat, and Obnixilis the Fallen. It's very intriguing, a black and white landfall strategy. It would be so unique, but I wouldn't be as eager to lean into it because we just have a lot of good cards that cost us life, and these would synergize more so with our fetch lands and not really help our commander out that much. Now, things that are going to help us out more so really synergize with our commander. We have cards like Sinister Concoction, Underworld Connection, Strands of Night, Chainer Dementia Master. Just so many black cards, black cards that have been good for a long time, black cards that are okay but really too expensive with their abilities. So if you're able to pay additional life and get double their value, they end up being a lot better. Strands of Night was always one of those cards that I felt like could be better if we had a way to abuse it. And paying an additional two life again, we don't have to pay those other costs, so you won't have to pay another two life or sacrifice a swamp to get two creatures back into play, I think is tremendous. Again, with Chainer Dementia Master, that's a lot of mana to play multiple times in a turn, and a lot of life. So only having to pay three more life and not three more black mana is really going to be fun in this black and white deck. 
Again, we're getting a lot of value from the graveyard with those cards. We have all-stars like Phyrexian Reclamation and Greed, Razaketh the Foul-Blooded, Velus Broker of Blood, all costing us two life in addition to those other costs. So only having to pay an additional two life to get their upside is really where Varric is going to shine. He's going to make some lesser known cards even better, way more viable, and he's going to make already great cards even better. We have some unique interaction. Street Wraith doesn't really see that much play in Commander. It's more of a modern and legacy card. But cycling here is an activated ability for two life. So paying another two life, you get another card to draw. Font of Agonies is one of the best cards that you can play with this strategy because it's kind of like with Kyrrhic Son of Yawgmoth. The goal of the deck could be to lose as much life as possible. So if that's the case, this is nothing but value. Whenever you pay life, you put that many blood counters on it, and the activated ability is two mana to remove four of those counters, so you can destroy target creature. We're going to have a lot of instances where we pay life, so this is going to get loaded with counters. We have Forsworn Paladin to give us an additional treasure token, and we have Priest of Fell Rites from last year's Modern Horizons. We have War Room so that we can pay additional life equal to the number of colors in our commander's color identity to draw an additional card. Yawgmoth Ran Physician, again, we pay an additional life. We don't have to pay the other cost of sacrificing a creature. We just pay an additional one, and we get to put a negative one, negative one counter on up to one target creature and draw a card twice. Vona was one of the first cards that people discussed when Varric was first spoiled, and you pay seven life twice, that is going to be a lot of life loss, but you would be able to destroy two non-land permanents, which is great. So if you are going to go for Vona, I would highly suggest that you lean further into the strategy of losing a lot of life in order to dump it on an opponent. We have the Cauldron of Eternity, mostly for that final ability, where we can pay an additional two life and get another creature from our graveyard to the battlefield. So let's talk about life gain. It's not going to be the primary strategy, but I really expect this to be a solid backbone for any Varric deck. We just have a lot of life gain options to choose from. One that I really like is Extort because all you have to do is pay an additional black whenever you cast any spell, and then you're going to have your opponents lose one life, and then you're going to gain that much life. So if you have three opponents, you're going to gain three life back, and it does add up. That life loss will certainly add up, so you need to offset it with something like this. It's subtle life gain. Pontiff of Blight gives all of your creatures Extort, so you have multiple triggers for Extort. What I like about the ability is for that most of the Extort cards, they're in addition to something else that's really good. Like Crypt Ghast is a really good black creature. Blind Obedience slows down so many decks, and Life Insurance is going to give you a ton of value for creatures dying. You can gain life passively just by sitting on things like Soul Warden, Soul's Attendant, Suture Priest, and the new Elasil Core Sadistic Pilgrim. I really like this, and I would probably suggest playing most of these over really any other method of life gain, because again, it is more passive. You're not paying man up to gain life. These just sit on the field and help you get back into the game. But white and black, they're no strangers to life gain. We have just a ton to choose from. You have the Sarah Ascendant, very infamous one mana creature. But early game, if you can gain back six life in combat, that's going to make the rest of the game a lot easier. Rock's Faith Mender to double your life gain. Aetherflux Reservoir to play the game normally without really having to worry about losing too much life because whenever you start playing spells, it's just going to offset whatever you're losing. It is also a win con, but I don't play Aetherflux Reservoir just to win the game on the spot like I know a lot of people do. To me, I'm looking at this in more of a practical application. Grey Merchant of Asphodel, again, it could be a win con, but more likely just a way to gain a lot of life back at once. It's again what I like about this commander, that we're able to use something as janky as Tavern Swindler and potentially make it great. You do have to pay three life to flip a coin, so it could potentially cost you six life, but I think that's really hilarious that we can take something like this. It's bulk, it doesn't see play really anywhere, and then maybe gamble that we get back a net gain of six life. It is possible to lose six life and really have nothing else happen, but in combination with a lot of other life gain cards, this could be worth it just because you're able to double that payoff. And then we have All-Stars when it comes to gaining life and punishing your opponents. Campbell, Console of Allocation, Exsanguinate. Those can be Hail Mary plays if you want them to be. Again, kind of like Grey Merchant of Asphodel. One-time uses that help you get back into the game. What I really love, and this is going to make playing things like Vona a lot easier, a lot less painful. We have cards like Children of Coralus and Tainted Sigil. I would highly recommend playing both of these no matter the strategy because you're going to be losing a lot of life off of the Varric trigger. So sacrificing either of these to gain back all that life that you lost in the turn is going to allow you to continue the game and nullify really the costs you're paying. 
We can also take advantage of our vampire commander being a vampire. By using Blood Tribute, we just tap an untapped Varric. Target opponent loses half their life rounded up. And because we tapped Varric, we're going to gain life equal to the life lost. Another card I highly recommend you consider is Revival and Revenge. The fact that you pretty much get another Blood Tribute with Revenge and you don't have to tap Varric, it's pretty cool. But Revival also has its usefulness as well. What I like about unique strategies, it's when you know that all roads are leading somewhere. You're not just doing it because it's a fun gimmick, you're doing it because it could potentially win you the game, and potentially be a hilarious way to win the game. Using cards like Magus of the Mirror, Repay in Kind, Reverse the Sands, Profane Transfusion, you can manipulate life totals, and even swap your life total for a bigger one. It's not super practical, sure, but usually hilarious ways of winning the game don't tend to be practical. And that's why they're hilarious. It's not a brand new strategy. We have done the same thing with commanders like Kirik, son of Yogmoth. So you lose a lot of life in that deck. You end up giving it to someone else with a much higher life total. You steal theirs. It's been done before, but what I do prefer with Varric over Kirik is that there's actually a point to losing life beyond just trying to get your life total lower, swapping it, or leading into an infinite combo with something like Aetherflux Reservoir. You actually get the value of paying life for a cost with so many cards. With Kirik, it was just more of a gimmick. A fun gimmick, but a gimmick. With Varric as our commander, these are actually a lot less obvious as win cons, because most players are probably going to be distracted by the tremendous value you're getting off of paying life. So by the time you get to 9 mana, they're maybe not going to see it coming. And the last strategy that I would say is viable, we have the vampires. We have vampire tribal, not my preferred route when entertaining this commander option, but vampires are a top 5 tribe. There is just so much synergy, even if you're not getting the best out of Varric's ability, you'll still have a pretty good deck. We have Vito, Thorn of the Dusk Rose, Blood Tracker, Twilight Prophet, Asteria, and the Decadent, so we're either abusing life totals or paying life for abilities. Vampires already did that pretty well, so you're not really straying too far from what Varric wants to do in order to satisfy the vampire tribe. Now, I could have mentioned Blood Artist alongside Soul Warden as another passive way of gaining life. However, I feel that most people who build around Varric, they're not going to be doing it the aristocrat way, so it's not going to be as easy sacrificing creatures and manipulating its trigger. That being said, it's still a great vampire, and in Vampire Tribal, you're almost always going to see it, so why not play it? You know, Cruel Celebrant's pretty much the same deal. Welcoming Vampire is another great one. Our commander is only two power, so that's why I'm bringing her up. And I remember when people got onto me when she got spoiled, because at the time I also said Vampire Tribal was better than Human Tribal. She offers a lot more upside even though her triggers once per turn. And then I totally laughed because we ended up getting a precon deck and along with a lot of other Vampire Tribal options and then no one ever brought that up to me ever again. Sanctum Seeker is another great way that we can gain life. It's not as passive. We do have to engage in combat, but to gain a life for each vampire we're attacking with is pretty sweet. And we talked about Extort earlier. We do have a vampire with Extort. So just really sweet ability. The fact you can get it on a vampire for Vampire Tribal is also cool. Drana's Emissary, Sangromancer, Malakir, Blood Witch. There's a lot of ways to recover that life loss. So I'll say it one last time, vampires are totally viable for this. If there's a downside to it, it's that you're missing out on the upside of those pay life costs that you're going to see more commonly in strategies that focus entirely around them. So that's going to do it for how to build around Varric Warped Sengir. Really love this creature. First time I saw it, I'm like, this reminds me of the Nosferatu clan from Vampire the Masquerade. Minus the wings, such a cool looking vampire. I always like it when they stray away from the Twilight pretty boy vampires and they go for something that's more science fiction, created in a test tube looking vampires, or some kind of creature that looked like it crawled out of the underworld. One or the other, I think those are really cool vampires. So let me know what you think about them in the comment section below. Commander Void here signing off. I will see you all next time.